Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and welcome to part two of my bass drum technique series. So today we're going to be working on some groove studies uh, from my book. Uh, we're going to be referring uh, most significantly to page nine. That's a page that we haven't worked that much on throughout most of my videos. Uh, this deals with two and three note groupings with uh, the bass drum or whatever else you're working on. Today we're going to apply it to the bass drum. I'll also show you some ways later in the video how to do really fast bass drum uh, doubles with one pedal. So let's get started. Uh, the first way you want to do this, and we'll be using the click for most everything today, so you have some sort of reference, is um, you want to play it straight through. Obviously, you know how to uh, read these rhythms before, and if you don't, you could learn that and write them in, but you need some sort of source material to practice all of this. So you'd read it straight through with just eighth notes on the hi-hat, okay? Now before I start, I just remembered, I, I want to deal with this real quick. I gotten some emails after my last video and some comments about my bass drum pedal tension. And I have covered that in other videos, but we'll cover it again. So uh, the pedal I'm using is just a basic uh, old Iron Cobra. Tama pedal. I like these pedals a lot. I don't have a Tama endorsement, but I like these pedals. They hold up really well. I have never had one break, and I have about seven of them uh, that I leave all over the place for different gigs, and uh, so one's always handy. I prefer the one with the strap. Uh, the one with the chain is great, but if you could find one with the strap, uh, I personally like that better. The chain is fine. It's just a little bit noisy, where the strap is very quiet. And the straps are also replaceable where the chains, uh, they're rarely going to break, but if they did, and I've never had one break on a Tama pedal, but I have had them break on several of my DW pedals. And when you're playing eight, nine hours a day, like I do, you're going to have those issues sometimes. So if you can find a strap, if the strap breaks, it's very easy to replace. So the tension I like to have is a very loose tension where the spring is barely engaged. And the way I check this is I will just basically hit the bass drum, flat-footed, take my foot off the pedal, and it has to go back and forth at least ten times. If it stops after three or four times, then that's not a good thing. All right, so once again... So you see how that is moving very easily. You don't want the pedal to control your foot. You want your foot to control the pedal. But it's sort of symbiosis there where it needs to be very balanced. I like to compare it to the balance point on a drumstick. If you're all the way back here and you drop the stick, nothing. But if you move up a little, okay, you get a good bounce. So that also applies to where the beater is, and we talked about that in the last video, so I suggest you watch that. Uh, I like to center, like I said in that video, uh, especially on like a 22-inch bass drum, right in the middle, the node of the drum, and that's where the pedal will be most balanced. Now, when, when you're dealing with an 18-inch bass drum, that may be a little off-center, which is fine because those particular bass drums sometimes have a better tone if they're just right above or below the node, okay? So that's one thing that I like to do and have the pedal balanced so it will move and not stiffen up. So it can be too loose, but the, most of the problems I see with my students when I tell them to bring their pedals in, which I do quite often, uh, it's too tight. So you'll just see that like that. And that's not good because you're having to work hard. So hopefully that'll answer that question. So back to page nine now. So once you learn how to read these on a pad or with a metronome um, and play them, uh, and one thing I would suggest is just basically getting sixteenths going like this with your hands and then playing the accents so the first line would look like this just so you can get that subdivision. And then the next thing is just to play just eighth notes like we did in the first video and play this with your foot. One, two, three, four.
Now, one thing you'll notice again, we talked about this uh, in the first video, is you want to accent the second note of a double where possible. That adds a lot of groove, um, a lot of funk to your playing. It also will make sure that when you want to, you can make those strokes even. All right, so there'll always be a little emphasis. And I do that, like I said in the first video, by dropping my heel down, as you see there in that pivot. So we'll play this for you. We won't go through the whole thing to save time, but we'll play some of it for you. And let's do it at a tempo uh, at quarter note equals 100, which is a tempo that I usually warm up with. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that's the first four lines or so. Again, you see that accent and you see that my body is really relaxed. I'm not using a lot of leg, just basically my ankle and I'm dropping my foot and doing that pivot on the three note and even the two note groupings. The next step would be to do some different things. So in other words, with your left hand, which was just sitting there, we're gonna do just across the rim now, all four notes. Now I'll go on from the fifth line. One, two, three, four. All right, so that's a few lines there. And uh, this page is really good for practicing because it's not all three notes all the time, which is an unrealistic thing in real life. Uh, it lets you rest a little. So I wrote these with that in mind. Sometimes you'll have single notes, but a lot of times doubles and triples. Then you can play backbeats. So we'll do a little of that, and then we'll do this from line seven. One, two, three, four. All right, so that's line seven to the end. And then just like the first video, you want to do some 16th. So you can do that two ways with one hand, and we'll slow this down to 80. So one hand on the hi-hat like this. Or you can do it quicker like this. All right, so uh, both ways. So we'll play a little of that for you. We'll go uh, where it's a little busier from line seven, just with the right hand sixteenths. Two, three, four. And then we'll also do it quicker with both hands playing 16th notes. Same place. One, two, three, four.
You can also do this with a push-pull motion if you want to do some one-handed sixteenths quicker. And you can use the ride symbol for that and maybe put the hi-hat on upbeats. And let's try that from line seven. So that's how that would work. That's, like I said, a little more advanced. So it's so important that you try to practice different um, hand ostinatos with these bass drum rhythms. So every day that you practice these, try to do a little bit of a different ostinato. In my book, there's hundreds of them, all kinds of stuff. So, you know, you can use that or any other kind of ostinato you can think of. It doesn't have to be backbeats all the time. It could be anything. But we're trying to get the foot coordinated uh, playing multiple strokes, that's what these videos are about, with these hands and getting it even, which is the hardest thing to do. The next step would be playing page nine with eighth notes, but at a fast tempo. So this is where we're going to talk about how to shift, again, pivot, because playing these really fast can be very difficult, as you know. So we're going to do that now, and we're going to go for a tempo that's about 116. Okay, which is very fast to play these. So we'll start from the beginning and I'll play through some of these for you. One, two, three, four. So that's the first four lines of that. So you see how that foot now looks different. It's compressing as far as the pivot motion. Then also try to do the same thing at this tempo with uh, some sort of hi-hat pattern, maybe off beats and then eighths on the ride. So that would look like this. And we'll go on here from line five. So that's also very important that you try to do some things with your hi-hat. Getting that balance between the feet is incredibly important. Finally, what you want to do is play these with a shuffle kind of feel. So that means like this. Right? So it's everything's like... Almost sort of like a hip hop thing. So let's try that slowly first, and we'll try it at 100, and then we'll boost up the tempo. So just start first uh, with the hi hat doing this, but slower. So that'll sound like this. And we're gonna obviously have to take off the 16ths for this, and we'll just leave the quarters on. Two, three, four. So if we do that uh, with a backbeat, uh, that'll sound like this. And we'll go from line four now. One, two.
Now that is a bit of a push-pull motion, if you're going to ask, which I know you are, with the right hand, and that looks like this. Very important that you remain relaxed up here. It affects your foot a lot. If Again, that first video we talked about looks like you're riding a horse. You don't want that. You want it to be very, very stationary. You see how I'm really relaxed up here? I'm not, you know, tight. I see that so much with drummers, especially nowadays. You didn't see it so much when I was growing up, but um, it's just kind of an epidemic, <laughs> that tightness, all right? You gotta get rid of that. So one good thing to do, and I've talked about this in my hand technique videos, is just basically do this reset where you're just putting your arms down, your head down, and you're just breathing and then you start again with your arms down. All right, so you wanna to try to do that. All that stuff is possible if you're relaxed. So uh, all those kind of shuffle rhythms uh, are important. Now let's play it faster for you. Here we go. One, two, ready. Just drives nice, nice there along with that foot. Okay, let's let's uh, go now back to page seven, and we're going to talk about playing really fast doubles. So augmenting these rhythms. This will be the last thing we do in this video today. Once again, this video, these uh, this series will be in separate parts, and uh, we have a couple more parts. The next one will be hand foot coordination, which is a huge uh, topic for soloing. All right, and fills. So if we go back to page seven, uh, what we're going to do is every time we see a 16th, and we're going to play a double on the bass drum. So if you see a 16th note written, that's when you play your quick double. So it's like a diddle, but we're doing it in a triplet feel. It's a little hard to understand, so I'm going to play it for you. And also you can add things here and there, little triplets, all right? So we'll go back to a slower tempo at 100. And this is going to be with a kind of a shuffle feel once again. One, two. It's also a really good idea to use the hi-hat uh, with your left foot when you're doing these and play on the ride cymbal. So uh, we'll skip a couple lines here and we'll go to line six. One, two, one, two, three, four. and just proceed like that. Again, I'm doing it up to tempo. You'd probably want to start it like this.
So again, those are triplets. Now to do it even faster, uh, in other words, compressing that double even more, we can do it in sixteenths. So this becomes, again, even more difficult. And we would raise the tempo up here to about 120. I'll show you how that works. One, two, three, four. So, for the first time in this video series, I'm going to tell you it's okay on these really, really fast uh, 30 seconds to almost leave that beater in the head like this. Because what we want to do is we want to dampen the beater. Um, I mean the, the bass drum. I can't talk today. <laughs> no, it's all that Christmas food that I've eaten. Uh, so what you want to do is stick that beater in the head to muffle it like this. But please don't do that, you know, for any other time. We're going to call this a special effect for this particular exercise. All right. Uh, slower, so you can see it in slow motion, unless you want to slow it down on YouTube. We'll do it 110, and I'll go from line six, which is busier. One, two... So once again, we want to do 30 second notes like this. All right, that's how fast these are. Very fast. So that double, you, you could stick it anywhere. It's just a great little thing if you're playing like fills. All right, anything, you know, hyper aggressive, if you want to show off all your chops, those are the kind of licks that you hear. A lot of folks play. So uh, it is okay for that particular thing to dead stroke muffle that drum. But, the, but otherwise, please don't do that in your regular playing. So that's it for this lesson. Once again, next lesson we're going to work on or start working on the hand foot stuff, which is really the meat and potatoes of developing or the final kind of the final icing on the cake for developing your bass drum foot because you're working with your hands and your feet. Uh, in some very involved exercises, which I'll show you. So I'll just play a little, and we'll call it a day. <laughs>